In today's video we are going to visit Walter White and Los Pollos Hermanos as we explore Albuquerque, New Mexico. Also, the National Museum of Nuclear Science and History and the Sandia Peak Tramway. That and more coming up next. I'm riding, 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 riding with my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Guys, I'm free in my RV. Well, hopefully today we've done a little better planning than yesterday and uh, the first thing I'm going to go to, um, to the old Albuquerque area, maybe have some breakfast and then we're going to do some Breaking Bad locations and then we'll see. Here we are, old Albuquerque. Let's find parking. Well, once again, it's dead here early in the morning, so we'll be back later. Although I was getting kind of hungry, but I can't wait. So I stumbled upon the visitors, uh, visitors information center. What a concept, right? And I uh, spoke to a very knowledgeable, very nice lady there. And uh, apparently nothing opens here in downtown uh, or in Old Town, rather. Take the next right onto South Plaza Street Northwest. Then turn left onto Rio Grande Boulevard Northwest. Until like 10 or 11 a.m. So, okay, that's that. So, uh, what I'm going to do now in the morning... Turn I'm going left to... onto Rio Grande Boulevard Northwest. She... Then turn right onto Central Avenue Northwest. If she lets me talk, I'm going to do the, the Breaking Bad locations. Not the one that is really far away in the middle of the desert because uh, it's like 40 minute drive and I know a 40 minute drive usually turns into an hour or two hours. But I'm going to go to like like Los Pollos Hermanos, the car wash, uh, Walter uh, White's uh, house. And then I'm gonna come back here to the, the restaurant that I was um, going to um, come to anyways, which is the church Take the next right onto Central Avenue Northwest, Route 66. And she recommended that, yeah, it is the oldest uh, restaurant in town, so I'm going to have an early lunch there, probably uh, Continue around, on uh, Central Avenue Northwest for one mile. Around 11-ish. And then there's a post office. I have to mail uh, a sticker to, to England, so I'm going to mail it from there, and then we'll see. There's so much to do. There's the Nuclear Energy Museum. There's, of course, the Sandia Peak Tramway. There's Nob Hill. Although she says that Nob Hill is under construction, so it may not be the, like, the greatest experience. So we'll take it from there. By the way, she also had a map of all the Breaking Bad locations. And I was, I was even considering taking a tour, but you know, I made myself a, a little bit a tour here. I saved some of the locations in the in Google Maps, and I'm just going to, you know, explore. Oh, by the way, if you're not really into Breaking Bad, feel free to skip ahead about three minutes or so, and we'll continue exploring the rest of Albuquerque after that. Here we are at the infamous location of Los Pollos Hermanos, which is Twisters, uh, burgers and burritos, a uh, fast food chain here in New Mexico and Colorado. Let's go inside. I'm not gonna eat, I just want to see it. Of course, they have a Pollos Hermanos sign right by the entrance. Hi, good morning. Well, let's uh, make sure that uh, we don't have any GPS uh, trackers here. Okay, and uh, we'll be on our way. We continue on our Breaking Bad locations tour. I know, old Kia is kind of filthy and in a bad need of a car wash, but that's not why we're here. This is the car wash from the TV series. Well, I was tempted to uh, do a car wash, you know, 
patronize the, the building, the, the business, but I don't know. Right, let's continue towards Walter White's house. How about that? Hmm. I guess they got the same idea as I did, or maybe they're cooking meth in there. Either or. Uh, yeah, the new owners have put up fences and cones. I don't think they are thrilled with the idea of having a famous house. And they have a sign that says, Take your pictures from across the street, do not disturb. But I won't disturb them. I just want to throw a pizza on that roof. I'm leaving. Let's find another. Oh, by the way, the guys uh, in the RV, I think they were taking pictures of the wrong house. <laughs> okay, let's go. Actually, if I owned that house, I would decorate it just like in the TV series and offer tours. Uh, but then I guess I would have to license the rights. It might not be worth it. Anyways, I'm not gonna spend my whole morning on this. So last but not least is one of my favorite locations, Hank and Marie's house. You know, the cop brother-in-law and it is located on the foothills of the Sandia Mountains in the very nice Glenwood Hills neighborhood. That's the one. Down the hill we go. By the way, there was a trailhead at the end of this street. Maybe we can do it some other time. The next time we come to Albuquerque, for sure. Well, the idea now, I'm going to take a historic Route 66 into town. I don't know how long that's gonna take, but sounds uh, sensible. And then uh, we're gonna have breakfast at the old town. This here is Central Avenue, which became part of uh, historic Route 66 back in 1937, you know, when the road came through here. And we're going to be approaching here a neighborhood called Nub Hill, which is uh, supposed to be very lively with this eclectic mix of locally owned businesses. Well, might as well make it all the way to downtown, right? This here is the Civic Plaza, and apparently they do concerts and special events, and when it is not in use, it is a great spot for the homeless to charge their phones, I hear. What does this building remind you of? It's like the Inter-American Plaza in Miami. We are back by Old Town. Let's check out Old Town here in uh, Albuquerque. Yeah, we're back here. This place is supposed to be right behind the church. Now I am really getting hungry, so let's go to that church street cafe to have an early Ooh, lunch. Yeah, I think uh, that's it over there. Hi. Okay, here we are. Church street cafe. I start with a coffee because I thought it was going to be breakfast, actually. This is apparently the oldest house. Albuquerque. Then I changed my mind to a local IPA because you know what? It is almost noon. This is the combination platter. Some bread and everything. A tamale, an enchilada. I think it's a chile relleno. Bread is, bread is fantastic. A bit pricey, but it was really good. And well, you know, you are in a historic building after all. Well, that was a very, very good meal. Check it out.
拜拜，拜。Well, that was uh, very nice. By far the the best meal I've had in New Mexico. So very pleased, and it is supposed to uh, supposedly the oldest private residence here in the city, as I mentioned, owned until 1991 by the same family. All right, let's continue exploring Old Town a little bit here. All these shops here in the back. here I am back by the old town plaza and the San Felipe de Neri church here's the official historic marker here we have these cannons and Native American crafts Check out the church. 1793. This here, the church, is the oldest building in the whole city and the only building here in Old Town proven to date back to the Spanish colonial era. Although it did go through some remodeling after 1817, like the bell towers and the pitched roof and the interior decorations, uh, those are newer. Well, I think we've seen enough here for today, uh, so I'm just going to slowly walk back to the car, admiring all this adobe-style architecture, uh, the chili peppers ever-present everywhere. Here's another restaurant I was considering for lunch today, although I think I made the right choice. Here's the main entrance to the old town area. So it is Don Francisco Cuervo y Valdez, founder of Albuquerque, April 23rd, 1706. The plan is we're going to go see some nuclear weapons. Nuclear or nuclear, how do you say it? Anyways. Saying goodbye to old, uh, um, I don't even know where I am, Albuquerque. <laughs> Take the next left onto San Felipe Street Northwest. Thank you. Check it out, Old Town. We have been here. Feet, turn left onto Mountain Road Northwest. You see the church? Yeah. We are going to transition here from colonial Spanish history and old Mexico to a much more recent time period, the Cold War. Our next destination is the National Museum of Nuclear Science and History, which I am really looking forward to because I grew up during the Cold War and I was stuck on the other side of the Iron Curtain, kind of. And so it is a very interesting historical period for me personally. Here we are. Adult admission is $12. In this first uh, section, we learn about some of the people involved in the study of the atom and uh, Einstein's letter to President Roosevelt, World War II and Hitler and the Holocaust and the nuclear threat. And then we get to see some artifacts from the era, from the different countries involved. The Manhattan Project that involved the design, assembly and testing of the first atomic bomb in nearby Los Alamos, very close to here actually. Uh, fascinating stuff.
Here's a replica of Fat Man, which was the bomb detonated over the city of Nagasaki, Japan. This flag flew at the site of the first atomic test, the limo that transported the scientists of the Manhattan Project. Gadget, the first atomic device ever tested. The Nagasaki aftermath. A Soviet section, perhaps? Ever wonder what a fallout shelter used to look like back in the 60s? Yeah. There is so much stuff here. I could make a one-hour video of the museum alone, but don't worry. I'm not going to do that. Here's a section about nuclear medicine. You see, it's not all war and doom and gloom. There have been actually many contributions to the advancement of medical technology. There's another section on radiation. They even have a Geiger counter here measuring the radioactivity of different materials. Electric power! And of course, a pretty substantial section about atomic pop culture. There is, of course, a famous DeLorean and something called a flux capacitor. Great Scott! Well, as I said, we could spend hours here. But before we go, let's step outside into what they call the Heritage Park. As I step outside, a museum doesn't, a very nice guy, follows me around everywhere and explains everything actually, like the fact that this F-16 would be carrying a hydrogen bomb under its wing and hits seeking missiles and um, yeah. Here's a B-29 Super Fortress, just like the one that dropped the atomic bombs over Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And it was from a tower like this one that they tested the gadget, the first nuclear bomb. At White Sands, actually, on the next video we are going there. Here's a Nike missile, with some of those at the Everglades not long ago. This, of course, is the legendary B-52. I recently had a chance to see one of these up in the air, and all I can say is, what a sight! This thing is majestic. It is almost the size of the whole museum building. And that's where they kept the hydrogen bomb down there. This here is the B-47 Stratajet, nicknamed the Widowmaker. Wonder why. It looks to me like an oversized fighter jet. And according to my guide, the pilots used to say that once it was up in the air, it actually handled like one. We move on to the rockets, the intercontinental ballistic missiles. But at this point, it is information overload. I believe this is the Titan II, a staple during the Cold War, always ready to be launched, pointing at the Soviet Union, of course. This one's called this the Peacekeeper. One. The Peacekeeper. And this is a four stage. Special type of epoxy. Let's see. Kevlar. Here's once again the Titan II, which was designed so it could fit on a truck on the highway and under most tunnels. Really cool. Now we go to the to the tramway to the Sandia Peak. Well, yes, we are going to do one more thing today before returning to the campground, and that is another one of the top ten things to do here: the Sandia Peak Tramway. 
there is actually so much more to do here, really, but I only allocated one day on this particular trip. More like an overview of the city, this is. You can bet we'll be back here sooner than later. We're going north on Tramway Boulevard here, which actually hugs the eastern city limit and eventually will take us to the tramway. Hi. I'm doing great, how are you? Great, it's a beautiful day, I'm on the mountain. Yeah, yeah, it's so good. good to be here. <laughs> Have you been uh, before? No, first time. Where are you from? In Miami, Florida. Miami, whoo, a little fly yeah. under there. Yeah, and lower. Worry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> been there, it's a nice town. Yeah, it's so good. Well, two whole dollars. It's two whole dollars to go yep. over there, right? It's okay. And then, how much is the tram to go over there? Twenty-five dollars? Twenty-five. Twenty okay. if you're a senior, well, you No, not yet, not quite senior. yet. I'll take it. <laughs> Just follow this road around it just landed you may be able to catch it all right if thank you next will be down 15 minutes all right perfect thank you so much now let's take the sandia peak tramway The 50-year-old tramway goes from 6,500 feet above sea level all the way to 10,000 feet along 2.7 miles of cable. As we ascend, we're going into the Cibola National Forest, passing Tower 1 now. From here up, the tramway was constructed by helicopter. 5,000 helicopter rides it took. Mount Taylor is a mountain about 75 miles to the west there. It's about 1,000 feet higher than we are. And it is a dormant volcano. So just to give you guys an idea of how big things really are from the tram. On the right hand side here, we're passing Fish Rock. And then right out back there on top of that hill, there's a big boulder perched on top. It looks curiously like a cannon. We're real imaginative. We call it Cannon Rock. It's about the same size as this cabin. So things on the outside of the tram are much larger than they appear. And you can see Cabazone from here too. If you look out to the northwest on the horizon out there, it looks like an Audi belly button sticking up out of the horizon. That's the, that's a El Cabazone, that's the hollowed out core of an extinct volcano. There's the mark from a lightning strike that looks like a face, or a skull, rather. At the very tippy tip top of that mountain up there, there's a little small square granite cabin with a little black window. And the longer you look for it, the easier it is to see. I know that sounds weird, it's totally up there. And it's right where the sky meets the tippy top of that mountain up there. And that was built in the 1930s by the Civilian Conservation Corps. It was built to house workers that worked up there a long time ago. It doesn't use it for anything anymore. It's just a national monument. But y'all can hike there. It's about a three mile round trip hike from Upper Terminal to Kiwanis and back. We've made it to the top. Well, what do you know? There is snow up here. No drones. Why am I not surprised? Here's the view looking towards the other side, to the east. So beautiful. There is our tram car going back down. There is pretty good Wi-Fi here in Upper Terminal, so if you recall, I did a live video from up here back in February. Such a commanding view.
ready to head back down. Not many people going down now because a lot of people come up here to see the sunset. So it is coming up full and going down nearly empty. By the way, Sandia means watermelon in Spanish, and the mountain at sunset, due to its color, it kind of looks like a sliced watermelon, I guess. Yeah, I kind of see how it could look like a sliced watermelon. I'm actually glad that the tram is coming back down nearly empty, because it is so much better to take in the views. There comes the other car. We are almost back at ground level. Let's drive back to the campground as the day comes to an end. Oh, by the way, did I mention that there is a brewery right next to the campground? Yeah, I think it's through here. There is a brewery. And there is a brewery. Yeah, it's pretty cool in there. What are you doing here? Aren't you supposed to be in Key West? I am eating buffalo frito pie and an IPA, of course. Well, it is our last sunset here in the West. But it's a beautiful one. Well, for sure I am going to miss having the Sandia Mountains in my backyard. But the show must go on. Well, uh, I'm about to take a shower and I always wanted to have one of these. It's a microfiber towel. Supposedly they dry up really, really quickly. And this was sent to me by, it's called the Country Bound. And uh, in, in the spirit of full disclosure, this is a, uh, I didn't pay for it, but I'm gonna test it out. And, well, this makes a lot of milk, huh? I'm gonna, whoa, I'm gonna test it out and uh, I'll let you know at the end how it is. Let me show you. It comes in this uh, nice bag that you could probably reuse for something else. And thank you, we appreciate. Uh, da -da -da. For 25 off your next purchase, visit uh, www.countrybound.com slash offer. I'm gonna put a link in the video description to this, but check it out. It's like two towels, three, four towels. Hmm. Very interesting and it's very thin, 
Well, this is the large one that I'm going to use. I mean, if you're a woman, you could even use it as a skirt to go to the beach. So, very nice. Squeaky cling now, and uh, let me tell you about the towel. It's a different drying experience than with a regular towel. Uh, there's more of a, a bit of more of a friction, you know. Uh, I don't know, it's hard to explain. Maybe you're supposed to pat dry yourself. It didn't come with instructions, so I don't know. But the good thing is, and especially here in the RV that sometimes uh, we are inside and we hang the towel inside to dry, it dried up way faster than a regular towel. So uh, yeah, thumbs up uh, to the... Um, to the microfiber towel by Countrybound, they, they give you three uh, towels in this uh, package and uh, I'm going to put a link in the video description if you want to get them. And uh, tell you what, I think it is time the, so for us to put a, a New Mexico sticker, so I'm going to do that right now. Here's my, my remaining stickers here on my map. Uh, let's uh, put up New Mexico and then I'll tell you what I intend to do here. By the way, a lot of people have asked me uh, where I got this map, and, and you know, this is the store that we all love to hate, uh, um, Camping World. I got it at the pop-up store that they usually have at the Tampa RV show. I got it the same year that we got a Minute in the Trailer 2015, and uh, 2014 actually. And let me tell you about, um, actually, January 2015 we got it. Let me tell you about my map and what I intend to do because as you can see, I'm about halfway done with the United States. I think I have like 25 states uh, left, exactly. So uh, now in, in the fall, we're gonna I'm gonna cover this whole area here because I've driven through many of these states, but I haven't actually uh, been in any of those states. And my premise for this map is I, I either have to sleep or do something significant in the state and I kind of cheated with Alabama because all I did was have lunch and a rest stop but I didn't want to have this gaping hole here in the south so that's what I did and I kind of cheated and uh, for some reason I, I haven't done uh, much in Alabama maybe because Alabama uh, gave me a bad, a bad first impression back in in 1996 when I was driving through here and on my way to New Orleans for Mardi Gras and, and we just stopped at a gas station and it was muddy and dirty or dusty I don't know there was something about it but definitely have to give Alabama a chance uh, probably in this next trip on my way back from New England uh, maybe we'll we'll have to do something there and then I, I, I want your suggestions about uh, doing the rest of these states in early uh, 2019 and uh, what route to use because I, I, I still have this whole area here in the middle I have Wisconsin and Michigan up there and then um, I would like to maybe maybe I can do like the uh, the Lewis and Clark uh, trail uh, the Oregon trail I don't know uh, do comment below if, if you know which is the best way to tackle all these states in a couple of months you know, like maybe we'll do um, yeah, early early 2019 because my goal was always to do the lower 48 before I turned the 48 and time's running out. Uh, I'm about to turn 47 right now. Um, so let's head south. I am leaving Albuquerque and uh, I've been going back and forth, you know, changing my plans. Originally, I wanted to go to um, uh, go through Amarillo, Texas, you know, to take uh, the part of Route 66 along the way. But uh, it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Actually, let me stop real quick. I, I think I forgot to, to close my basement. Or storage, whatever it's called. <laughs> okay, I closed it, but I didn't lock it. Let me, I'll be right back. Well, as I was saying, there's a storm coming, and a um, uh, winter storm. Maybe it, it, it might even rain here in Albuquerque. So I have to head back south. I'm going to El Paso, Texas, once again, and then I'm gonna take I-10 east all the way back. Um, 
the one positive thing Take about the next right onto South Hill Road. Thank you, Google lady. Uh, the, 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 the one positive positive thing about this is that I might be able to stop for a few hours in uh, San Antonio, which will be cool because it's, uh, I've heard it's a very neat uh, city. So this is where I stayed, Bernalillo. Let's fly the drone here one more time. Landing. Well, yes, this is when the drone decided to land by itself on the other side of the highway. Stop landing. Stop landing. Stop landing. I was able to take control and bring it back as fast as I could. But it was a scary moment for sure. breakfast here at the rest area I'm heating up some I made like a wrap with ham and cheese with those new uh, tortillas I bought in New Mexico and here we are at the rest area I am going to head back south towards El Paso as I make my way back to Florida I actually want to make it back by Valentine's Day so I must rush a little bit but before that we're going to explore the white sands and spend a couple of hours in San Antonio, so stay tuned for that. If you have enjoyed traveling with us, then make sure you are subscribed and check out my other videos. Also, share it with your friends, spread the word and leave me a comment. Now, if you really, really liked it, you have a chance to show your support at patreon.com slash travelingrobert. As always, Thank you so much for watching and see you on the road.